busyness. That's what we're going to be talking about for the next few minutes. I'm Mark Mellinger at the Gospel Coalition National Conference 2013 and joining me to help navigate these waters is Kevin DeYoung, who most of you know from University Reformed Church in Lansing, Michigan. Brother, it's good to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. You have written on this topic quite a bit and for guys like you and me, still fairly young but with growing families. Yes. Uh, we, we both have kids. Um, how busy is too busy? Busy professional lives, but also families. How busy is too busy? Uh, probably your life and my life <laughs> are, too are, are too busy, I would guess. Uh, you, you know, it, it's a hard question to answer because God made us to work. Right. Work isn't a part of the fall. The way work hits us is. So, you know, the antidote to busyness isn't to just be lazy and not doing anything. I, I think maybe the, the best answer is when we're no longer doing what Mary was commended for in Luke 10, we're too busy. You know? Which is? Yeah, so Martha's doing all the preparations and right. all the stuff, and we say, well, somebody's gotta do that. And he said, okay, that's great. Mary has chosen the better part because she's sitting at the feet of Jesus. So that's at least one marker I know in my own life when I'm not having the time to sit at the feet of Jesus, quietly reading a word in prayer, unhurried time, then I'm too busy because I know I'm not doing what Jesus says is the better part. What about some of some of the other issues? Um, for instance, I'm away at this conference for six days. My yeah. wife texted me today and I'm normally my son's baseball coach. She played catch with him for three hours yeah. out in the yard yesterday and I didn't and yeah. I'm getting a text about that. I mean, we have to make time for that sort of stuff too, right? Yeah, and it's hard because, you know, Paul said he is spent and gladly will be spent for the gospel. So there right. is that, it, there, are, there are going to be sacrifices and oftentimes our, our lovely wives bear those in ways even more pronounced than, than we would. I mean, this is being a fancy hotel, this isn't hard. <laughs> right, this isn't sacrifice, no, really. No, this, this isn't sacrifice. So it's a matter of having some sense of priorities. This is what amazes me about Jesus. He is his Mark 1, he's healing all these people, he's preaching, he's up all night, uh, people are waiting in line to heal, and then Peter goes to find him, and he's in a quiet place praying. Mm -hmm. And to think, Jesus, just one more person, he could have just healed him. I mean, we talk about fruitfulness, faithful, effectiveness in ministry, he had it, and yet he knew, I have to have a priority, and right now my priority is to go to the next town and preach. Mm -hmm. So unless you and I have a sense of what our priorities are, we won't do what's best and what's most needful. And, and you said devotional time is one of those priorities. How do I know, what are some of the warning signs when things are lapsing with my family, with you being a pastor, your yeah. church family as well? What are some of the warning signs that, ooh, I may not be prioritizing those groups like I should? I mean, have you seen them? I, oh, I, know, yeah. I know this sort yeah. of snuck up on you. You yeah. never set out to be a reformed Christian movement rock star. It just sort of has happened, and you're not totally I comfortable with it. I don't even listen it. to rock music. Yeah. I don't even know what it means. Uh, you know, I, th I think one in my own life is that irritability. Yeah. I mean, just to, uh, you know, being upset, being more easily angered, not being patient, that's one of the first things to go in, in my life. Uh, I know when I have that feeling like I need to wake up and my singular goal for this day is not to get buried. And if, if everything goes right, maybe I can just maybe break even with my to-do list. And I said, that, that's, that can't be what God wants. Right. You know, for a day, for a season, you got a newborn crying, I understand that. But when all of life is like that, you have to think, there must be something. And here's the real question. It's easy to say, well, it's, it's the pressures and it's, you have so many responsibilities. But I've realized at some level, it's gotta be something in my own heart. It's gotta be some rot, some disease. That's the real danger, Jesus says. The thorn that chokes out the word is not only money, but it's, it's the worries of life. It's, it's all of mm -hmm. the time it takes to have a mortgage, have kids, have a house, clean your car, fix the toilet, all of that stuff. And like, I, I mean, I often say, busyness has killed more Christians than bullets has. I mean, that, mm. that's, a, that's a bigger danger. Wow. And what, what sort of a toll does it take on 
our wives, our kids, and, or you know, the reverse is true for women can be just as busy as, oh, as men. For women, husbands, church fans, what, you know, what sort of a toll does it exact on its victims, busyness? I mean, the, the biggest danger, I mean, it's easy you point to studies about health and the effects of stress. Yeah, sure. But it's really, it's the spiritual damage that it can do that we, that not only are we not caring for our souls, we forget we have a soul. I mean, we forget right. what, what does it really mean to be still and know that I'm God, or to, to in rest and, and repentance. There's just no quiet. And I think what it what it what we lose are those rhythms of life. That you, you see, Israel they had a Sabbath, a weekly thing, and they had monthly feasts, and they had annual feasts. And now today with technology, I mean, you know this. You, you can be on your phone. You can be on your mm -hmm. tablet. You're working everywhere. And when you're at work, you're sort of, you know, taking care of home stuff. And there's there's no rhythm. And when we don't have that rhythm of rest and work, of feast and famine, it just kind of all muddles together. And I think that's when we get into this kind of uh, sloth where actually we think we're busy and we're being lazy. Well, I, I think this, um, I think it's a unique challenge for our time. It's what I call distractedness. I can, I, I have an iPhone in, he, in yeah. here yeah. and I can be where I have three jobs and I can be working at any one of those jobs at That's any right. given moment That's of the day right. while I'm at the breakfast table right. with my kids, while my wife is having a con or thinks she's having a conversation with me. Right. I, don't you think this is a unique challenge of our time that we didn't have before? It's a temptation, I think. Yeah, we didn't. I mean, I, I remember just four or five years ago for the first time uh, speaking at a seminary and a couple guys came up to me afterward and I could tell they had something kind of to unburden and, and I just assumed they were probably talking about sexual addiction or something. Sure. But they wanted to talk about internet addiction. I mean, they wanted to talk about screens and they wanted to say, w what do we do? And at that time, I wasn't blogging, I wasn't tweeting, I wasn't on Facebook, and I just sort of was like, what's your problem? <laughs> and now five years later, I, I resemble that remark, pride comes before fall. <laughs> right. I'm all of those things. And it's that insatiable desire. We, at some level, we want to be like this. We want to be right. constantly distracted. And, you know, iPhones, you know, tablets, they serve us, okay? God uses them, but like any technology, we can use it as, uh, you know, a servant or as our master. Let, Most of us are slaves. Let me ask if you've gone through this. Uh, this never would have been a problem when I was a kid, but it is now. When I have leisure time, unplanned time, I find myself with nothing to do, I, sudden, I suddenly feel lazy or guilty or, yeah. or, uh, or something to that effect. Did you experience the same thing? Yeah. And, I and, don't think we should feel that way. But no. And just as bad, you know, you have those 15 minutes and what do I do? And what's the easiest thing? Yep. Take, Take out your out. phone. Scroll through Twitter, Facebook, ch check the blog. Oh, there's five more emails. And that's what I'm talking about. Just the absolute blending and blurring of any kind of boundaries or rhythm in our life so that we have the illusion I'm so frantically busy and if you looked at it you say your your whole life has become a kind of my life a kind of malaise where you're never quite working you're never quite resting and we we actually have to work very hard to rest and work very hard to use that time and do it in with with a kind of life-giving leisure not just a sort of acedia that you just slounge, you know, sloth mm. around for a while. Last thing, are, are you learning to say no? And what are you, if so, what are you learning to say no to? Well, I, I've thought and, and tried to write about busyness because I have a problem <laughs> and I don't know the solution. <laughs> um, you know, one of the pastors on our staff really challenged me gently, but firmly uh, several months ago, Kevin, I don't see you taking your day off like you were. Uh, when's your day off? So I've had to re recalibrate my schedule, and that was a good challenge. So that, that's one thing. And, uh, you know, it, it's Peter Drucker's phrase that you need not only priorities, but posteriorities. <laughs> you know, your, your posterior. Your, what are you going to say no to? Everybody has, well, here's my priorities, and it's God, and it's family, and it's my church. Well, that's good, but that doesn't mean a thing unless you have posteriorities. What are the things, therefore, that you won't Mm -hmm. do because we live in an age where most of us have you know a, a bazillion opportunities and people tugging at us and until we know what we won't do we won't actually do the things that we say we should do that's vintage peter drucker know where your time is going yeah that's right, that's right. <laughs> kevin de young brother thanks so much thanks, thanks.